It's time for the Creator Town Hall here on Studio Live today for another week. In this week's episode, we're going to be mixing. Yeah, we're going to be diving in and getting our hands dirty with some practical mixing as I do the first rough mix of my track here for Song Temper 2022 called Grown Ass Man. Maybe. We'll have to decide on that. You can help me throughout the show decide what we actually call this song. But if you're brand new, if you're brand new, whoop. Oh, see, we were, I was so anxious I started playing the song. If you're brand new to the show here, and if you're brand new to the channel and brand new to Song Timber, what is it all about? Well, it's our song in a month challenge. So if you are out there and you're like, hey, I like creating music and maybe I want to join a community and get cracking, well, yeah, we're halfway through. We're halfway through the month, almost officially now, all around the world. But you can jump on over to studiolivetoday.com slash songtember and uh, you'll find all the Songtember 2022 stuff. You can join the Facebook group. You can join the Discord. Lots of cool chats and cool folks going on over there. You can also dive in here to uh, submit your song. You can check out the friends of Songtember, J Star, Thomas Christ, Leela Lou, Reality, <gasps> Keon Ren, Tommy Jack. And uh, yeah, you can check out all the cool stuff going on around the community to do with Songtember. Song Timber, but today we are here to mix, but there's a couple of things that have happened in the last few days that I wanted to cover up front. So a few little bits of news and notes, then we'll say g'day to the folks who are here live, and then we will uh, dive into this mixing. So you may have noticed that uh, we've got ourselves a brand new iOS update, iOS 16. Now, my advice on new versions of iOS is do not update to the dot zero, the first day release. Why? Because there's some unintended consequences that sometimes happen. So sometimes you'll update your device and then suddenly this one random app that you rely on, it becomes your Achilles heel and then everything falls apart. So especially if you're doing, they do this every year. The new iOS versions usually come out in the middle of September and usually right during Songtember where a lot of you folks and me, we're all creating songs. And if you're creating songs and you're relying on plugins, you're relying on third-party apps, you're relying on your GarageBand or your Aurea or your Cubases to be stable, my recommendation is keep it on iOS 15.7. Now, there is an update to iOS 15.7, so you do want to make sure you update to that because there was a zero-day exploit, which means there's an exploit that could actually impact the security of your device. They're the updates you got to do. So update to 15.7, but you'll also get the option when you go to update to say, would you like the new shininess? Would you like a 16.0? Please uh, very carefully consider whether you do want 16.0. The other problem is related to the next thing we're going to talk about, which is that there is a new version of GarageBand. Yeah, so the, the GarageBand you just saw there, we've actually got a brand new version, except here's the caveat. It's only available on iOS 16. So... If you are like me and you run an iPad and an iPhone, you want to stay on 15.7 for the time being. I'm not saying never update, but the problem is iPadOS has not been updated to iPadOS 16 and won't be for about another month. That's the word from Apple at this stage, which means if you update your iPhone to iOS 16.0, your iPad has to stay on 15.7. Some of the apps that update for iOS 16 will then be on different versions across your two different devices, and that is an appetite. No, it's not. It's a recipe. I was going to say an appetite for destruction. No, it's a recipe for disaster to have your two separate devices on two different versions of what is essentially iOS, iOS and iPad OS. So again, the public service announcement here is unless you have an absolute desire and need to, or just want to love living on the edge, leave your iPhone on 15.7 for now until all the people have done the beta testing on the iPad version. And if you want to see the behind the scenes stuff here, if we jump here into the app store, as I was doing earlier, and we search out GarageBand, here's the problem that you're going to find, is if you search GarageBand and you jump into this one here, you'll see here, requires iOS 16.0 or later. So I'm here at version 2.3.12, but if I wanted to go here and update to version 2.3.13, which has some bug fixes and uh, some stability improvements, uh, and by the way, check out um, Patrick Patrick Baird over at GarageBand Guide. has got a video about all, the, all this detail as well, so you can go and check that one out as well. But yeah, you won't be able to update to that one. And I haven't done the full test because this is my daily driver iPhone. I haven't updated to iOS 16 myself, so I don't know. But based on previous experience, 
as soon as your project is converted. So if I updated this to iOS 16 and then opened my project, I would not be able to open it back over there on iOS 15.7. So I know I harp on about this sort of stuff, but it is super important because too many folks just jump the gun. They get excited by the new shininess. And then I get that email saying, Johns, help. What do I do? How do I roll back? And you know what Apple are not good at? allowing you to roll anything back. Once you've updated, you've updated and that's it. Uh, so that's all I wanted to talk about there. The other news, I guess, is that there is a new pack. So I've got a video which you can check out about the new Beat Tape pack. It is a hip hop pack. It is what it is. <laughs> Everyone seems to like using that phrase at the moment. And it's true. It is what it is. It's a hip-hop pack. It's pretty cool. There's some cool beats and some cool grooves in there. I really like the um the kind of dusty vinyl. If you ever wanted, even if you're not using the, the synths and stuff, there's a few sort of bars of, you know, that real sort of dusty old vinyl scratching sound that you could use in your tracks if you wanted that sort of effect. So jump on over there and check out the new pack or just jump onto your device and download it. And the good news is that you do not need iOS 16 to get the pack. So thankfully, Apple haven't done what they've done in the past and tied the pack to the new iOS because I think they knew that there would be a mini riot from iPad users if they decided to do that. Let's say g'day to all the folks who are here live uh, and kicking. G'day to Princess LDG. G'day to Mark Bro. We've got Fat Cat Panda. Uh, Fat Panda Cat, even. Hope you're doing well. Um, we've got uh, Mr. Thomas Christ, our wonderful moderator in the house here. We've got Steve Brain. Hello to you, my friend. Uh, Princess, I see your question. I've tagged it for later. So we'll have a little uh, a little chat. Is that a tiny Robin doll in the background? Uh, that, that is, um, uh, is it, what's the name of the, it's a Powerpuff Girl. It's Bubbles? No, it's not Bubbles. It's it's one of them. Someone will know the name of that Powerpuff Girls. Uh, hello, Lou Reality. I hope you are doing well. New version of GarageBand. Yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, do, just just take heed. Don't don't update to the 16.0 unless you absolutely have to. Uh, Leela's been playing with the loops. Yeah, there's some cool loops in there. Look, it's not exactly my jam, but there's some cool stuff in there. It's worth it. Worth it. 15.6.1, uh, I have. Try and get to 15.7 only because of that zero day, um, that zero day compromise. So there is a security issue that can affect you through Safari and through WebKit, which is the browser, and you do not want bad guys getting hold of your stuff. So try to do that. Uh, I'm buying an iPad because of, of all of you. Yeah, totally. Uh, it, it's cool. iPad music production is uh, is where it's at. It's a lot of fun. Uh, g'day, Frigsy. Um, bought my first iPhone because of this game. Yeah, see, look, we're, we're converting everyone to the dark side. Um, I used to have just an iPad and an iPhone. Uh, now I've got a, two Macs, uh, two iPads, an iPhone, and an iPod Touch. So it, it happens. I'm sorry. I'll, I will cost you money, but, uh, but I'll help you use it. I'll help you use it. Uh, but does it have 808s? Uh, I'm not interested. And you know what? I couldn't find a single 808. I was disappointed. I'm like, you've dropped the ball here. You've dropped the ball, Apple. Uh, hello, Rena. G'day, Joe and Barry Glenn. I hope you are doing well. Yeah, Powerpuff Girls. I just can't remember what. Buttercup. Buttercup. She's the toughest fighter. Is it that one? I think so. I love their names. Uh, UR22, audio interface. Yeah, UR22 is for the win. The other thing, just while we're talking this, because, you know, I do want to jump into the mixing, but... um. The other thing I wanted to mention about the uh, update is that there is a cool thing. So deep in the notes, in the revision notes, in the weeds, and we heard about this with iOS 16 being announced, is that they're going to allow non-class compliant audio devices to be usable within iOS so what does that mean? So until now, uh, as someone just mentioned, the, the Steinberg UR22C uh, or UR22 Mark II is a class compliant interface. But the older versions, the Steinberg UR22, the, the Mark I, the first version, was not class compliant. It needed separate drivers to run, which meant it couldn't be used in any of your iOS devices. The same with any Thunderbolt interfaces, any, um, what, what was the, what we had, Firewire back in the day. Don't know why you'd be hooking up Firewire stuff. But all of your higher end gear that doesn't use USB and is not class compliant, you couldn't use it with iOS because it didn't have drivers. So they've actually said they're going to now support those. Now, how that's going to work, are we going to have separate iOS drivers? A manufacturer is going to come on board providing drivers for their higher end gear? We don't know. We don't know yet. But it's a good sign. It's a good sign that Apple are actually seriously considering pro audio connections and connectivity like Thunderbolt to be able to be used with your iPads and iPhones in the future. 
So we will see. Uh, Mark says, I updated my phone since I don't use it for music production. Use copies of older tracks and third-party plugins seemed okay. Yeah. And look, you, you'll probably be fine. And that's exactly exactly as Mark says. If you use your phone and you don't use it for your music production, just keep it completely separate from your iPad. Update your phone. Everyone's happy. But just don't accidentally jump into GarageBand and then update a project and open it there because there is no going back. And that's why I actually recommend version control as well, because you can at least go back to a previous version if you do stuff it up and do that. It is the dark side. It's fine. There you go. Yeah, get it, get on to 15.7. Just uh, I'd, I'd hate to see anyone get, uh, get exploited by the bad guys and gals. Let's be honest, mostly guys. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's jump in here and get mixing, shall we? Now um, we are at the point. If you caught the last show, uh, which I did live on Patreon, and uh, I played the replay for folks uh, here on the channel, we recorded a bunch of vocals. So we recorded doubles and triples of my lead vocal. We recorded uh, a, a background vocal and a double of the background vocal, and we recorded these backing vocals as well. So it was a big chunky vocal recording day. And if you want to go back and relive that, or you missed it you can go ahead and do that since then i've re-recorded these guitars because there was a few little timing issues that i had so last night i sat down and re-recorded all three guitars which are sounding better now there's a couple of little issues in there which we'll talk about as we go through and uh, the lead guitar as well i re-recorded all of those i kept the originals in here just for for post posterity um and i've uh, i've been playing around a little bit with the bass so we've got our, uh, our upright bass there and our little acoustic bass and here's the big thing i've uh, look i've even i've gone through and changed all the icons look at this look at this effort look how much i love i love you folks uh, well actually i love myself because i want i want the ability to see what the heck i'm doing here so these are jade stars drums the kick snare hats toms ride and three separate crash symbols so I've, those are all separated out onto different tracks and we've been mixing those in with the rest of the instruments so i've got those all nicely separated out so that we can play around with them so let's uh let's dive in here and uh, and have a little bit of a look and a listen at uh, what we've got so far by the way if you do have questions we do we have some time today we won't be mixing the whole way through so do put a question or a cue in front of your comment if you've got questions either about the new garage band or about ios or ipads or iphones or audio gear whatever it is this is the creator town hall it's your time so i want you to be clear that if you do have questions or comments i will be keeping an eye on the chat and we'll be doing that as we go uh g'day barry glenn too by the way i hope you are well and did i see phil uh yes there's phil gone dropping on in i hope you folks are doing well so let's take a listen to how this is sounding thus far and just do a quick sound check here <laughs> need to do a little clip there So uh, all coming together there, okay. Uh, I noticed is that bit not, um, that bit's not got it so back. I'm a there we go. Man, take me home. Right, so it's starting to come together. It's sounding more like a cohesive project. So we're, we're going to do some attempts of mixing here today to see if we can bring this a little bit more to life with some things. So let's uh, come out of here, do our usual thing, save, and let's grab ourselves a new version. We're going to duplicate out. We're at version 12 now here, just so that we know that if we completely mess up in this one, we can go back to version 11 and we'll be good to go. So let's open version 12. And by the way, if you're watching here live or if you're on the replay and you've got ideas, mostly mixing now. The arrangement I'm kind of happy with, but I'm always open to, to suggestions. We've probably got a little bit too much in the arrangement, so there might be some pairing down of some of these, devi some of these devices, some of these tracks, just to simplify them a little bit. But I, I usually go with more in 
in there first. I know Jade's done that with the drums. She's put the drums are, are in are really good. There's a few spots where I think I'll just tweak it and put a few breaks in there where the drums aren't quite as intense. But it's so much easier to do that. Rather than adding stuff back in, it's easier if you go a little bit more and then we can bring stuff back a little bit here in the mix. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you are listening to this through my iPad which is going through an audio interface, my Steinberg UI22C that's going out into a mixer, my Zoom LiveTrack L8 mixer, which is going through StreamYard, which is the streaming software that I use, and then that's going to YouTube, who are compressing the whole gosh darn mess. So <laughs> you're not going to be hearing this exactly as I hear it in my headphones or in my monitor speakers, so just keep that in mind, that if things are sounding a bit muddy or a bit compressed in parts, some of that is probably to do with me and my mixing skills, but a lot of it will be to do with the actual compression that's coming through. So just keep that in mind if you uh, if you can. Uh, I want to use both Fruity Loops and GarageBand together in tandem, and you can. You can do whatever you want to do. You can, you can mix it, you can max it, match it, you can uh, do your thing. Um, just keep in mind that they're not going to, your projects aren't going to be compatible, but you can shift audio. Once your audio is in an uncompressed wave format, you can move it between stuff and you'll be fine. All right, let's have a little, uh, little play around with this. So what we need to do is come in here and firstly work out what tracks we are keeping and where, because what you'll notice is there that I've, I had the vocal double. Let's, let's talk about the vocals here for a little while. So here's my lead vocal that we recorded last time. We did three takes. I'm using this take here. So this first take is completely down at the moment. And the reason I'm keeping this here is if I find some bits in this vocal that I really don't like, I can swap in this first vocal and just see if there's a better version of it. It's kind of, it's like comping, vocal comping, and I've got videos about vocal comping here on the channel, but it's a very simple version of comping. But this is the lead vocal that we're using here, which is sounding like this. Never one for going hard. Never had a fear of missing out. Never happy. Now this echo that I've got on here, I'm not um, one, two, three. I actually want to change this echo up because here in GarageBand, you've got two ways of adding effects. You've got all of your track effects here. So you can see here we've got some tape delay, stereo delay, and compressor on this vocal. If we come out to here, you can see we've got master effects. So we've got master reverb, which I'm using the default reverb at the moment. So I might actually make this, uh, what do we need? We need this more like a, a hall. I'm going to go the medium hall for the, the reverb we're using on this track. And the echo, I've got this ambient delay, which is doing more of that slap back kind of delay. I actually want it to be bow, 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 which I think is going to be a quarter note echo. So let's just experiment with this, just so that we can get this echo on the beat. Never one for going hard. Never had a fear just of turn missing it, turn out. Just turn it up so we can hear it. Never happy, Never happy in, a in a crowd. And I know I'm not the only one. I'm a grown -ass. So you can hear now that we've changed that master effect. And, and the, the good thing is that if we then use this on guitars or on drums, it's going to use that same quarter note delay. And I personally, when I do a track like this, I like to use uh, quite a bit of reverb, using the master reverb, and then a little bit of echo on almost every track. You'll see that as we go through, and it kind of just glues things together. Do you reckon? Uh, so let's uh, let's just play this vocal again. We'll come down to the chorus and uh, take a listen to the vocal in the chorus section. Lights on. Don't have a plan. Please take me home. Home. I've had all I can stand. Please take me. All right. There's the cutoff. Um, so that first hole didn't quite sound right to me. So this is where we can do a little bit of fine tuning in here. And the, the beauty of having a bunch of different takes uh, recorded is let's take a listen to uh, the, the first take we did of this. Oh, it helps if you turn the volume up. That way you can actually hear it. <laughs> let's take a listen. I just don't have a plan. Please take me home. Mm, that one's not really that much better, is it? Let's uh, compare it to this first one that we were listening to, which is this track two. Not alone, because I just don't have a plan. Please take me 
home. Okay, it's not not quite as bad. Not as bad as I thought it was originally. So we'll just turn we'll turn that one back down. I don't like the complexity of chopping between vocals. I'd rather use one vocal performance wherever we can. So that's some very basic stuff that we have there. And yeah, we can come in here and play with a lot of other things in terms of the actual EQ, which we might play around with. But remember, when you're mixing, a lot of people ask me questions about mixing. They're like, what volume should this be? What EQ, what plugins, what effects? How do I do this? How do I do that? The answer is it depends. It's always it depends. And you really need to listen to it first. And the thing is, when you're using something like GarageBand, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So if you use those presets, we've already got a lot of stuff built in there. So you don't have to tend to worry as much as you think you would. And this is the difference. When I started, started creating music and I was using Reaper, if you created a tra track, it was completely dry, completely blank, and you had to go in and custom set all of the different stuff. Whereas here in GarageBand, to be very honest, <laughs> I know people don't want to hear this. They're like, oh, I want to know all the bells and whistles and all the things we have to do. But when I grab a guitar, so let's just take a listen to these acoustic guitars. These are basically using almost the default nice room setting. And I think they sound pretty good. So all I've really done here is I've rolled off a bit of the low end here because they were a little bit sort of a uh, little boomy in the sort of low to mids. I haven't really done anything else. I haven't changed much else in here. I haven't really uh, played around with it too much. I'm using a little bit of the echo, a little bit of the delay uh, of the reverb on both of those tracks. And then we just pan one of them left and one of them right. And that's about it. And then you're getting a pretty decent tone. So, I don't know, I, I keep things simple. I don't spend a lot of time. And, and because I mix as I go, you get to this part of the process. And instead of going, oh my God, instead of it being overwhelming and daunting, you don't have to worry so much about it. You don't have to sp spend that time stressing about it. So, so where were we? We're back here on the vocals. So what we need to do is decide on where we want this vocal double. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this track because this one is definitely going to be my vocal double. So we'll rename this one instead of Vox Lead. It's going to be Vox DBL to make me know that this is my doubled vocal. And uh, we won't want it during the verse. So I'll almost definitely not want it here. Um, in fact, what I'll do is we'll, uh, we'll duplicate this one out. We'll duplicate that one and we'll mute the first version and then we'll copy all these across. The reason I'm doing this is I don't want to lose any of those things. As we go through and choose where we want the double, even though you uh, you do have non-destructing destructive editing here in GarageBand, if you completely delete something, it's kind of gone. Like you can't, or if you overwrite something or delete it, it's hard to bring it back in. So we'll paste it in. Now, if you're not familiar with a vocal double and why you'd use one, it thickens up your vocal. So if we take a listen to these, if we solo these two, and I bring up this double, you'll you'll hear how it sounds. Never one for going hard. So you hear if you bring that um all the way. Never had a fear of missing out. If you have it up too high, it sounds weird. Never happy in a crowd. But when you bring it down there. And I know I'm not the only one. Kind of thickens it up. I'm a grow. So what I do is I don't want it in the in the verse. I want the verse to be a little thinner so that when we hit these choruses, it's going to come in and hit it hard. So let's just take a listen to this transition here between it. And I know I'm not the only one. I'm a grown ass man. Please take me home. And then for the second part, I've done all. We'll leave it in for there. And then we'll just come to the end here and we'll uh, trim it off. So we'll split it, we'll trim it. And this is our second verse. So we don't want it through the second verse, but we do want it again in the second chorus. Not alone, cause I just don't have a plan. So that way we can, uh, again, split it out here just before that section. We don't want it this section in between. Delete, see ya. And then this is our. Cause I just don't have a plan. Please take me home. And you can hear there, there's a. I've had all. So what a double does is it gives you that bit of depth. It won't be exactly timed like the first one, and it won't be in the exact same pitch, but it does kind of help cover up. It's like it's like a natural auto tune. <laughs> it does give you a little bit of help with some of that pitching. All I can stand. Please take me. All right. Um, now, because we, we have a background vocal double for the next section, which is this so uh, quietly, which is that little bridge bit, we won't need it in here. So let's split that one out and uh, we'll come back to the final chorus, which is where we definitely want our double in here. I'm a grown. 
cut. So we can just trim this by trimming your handle down there. And then this is going to be our big final. I'm a grown ass man. Please take me home. Uh, yeah, we've got folks talking about vocals. So Leela's saying um, she likes to use, uh, I've, I've missed it now. Uh, Leela's like, she, yeah, this one here, she likes to use Vox triples. So yeah, you can do that. I use that with guitars. You'll notice I did a triple on the guitar. I've got one left, one right, one centre for our guitar. Um, with, with a track like this, where I just want to thicken it up, I'll usually put them both down the middle. What I may do, and I know uh, Princess, you had a question there about the wider plug-in. Sometimes on my double, I'll put a wider plug on it, or I'll put a stereo lag plug-in on it, which will just give it a little bit more width and depth um, if they're both down the centre. So we'll play around with that in a moment. So there you go. We've got our vocal and we've got our vocal double. I'll just bring this one up here and pop it under. I'm pretty confident that we won't need this. And if we do want it, we can go back to the last version. So just for cleanliness, let's get rid of that one because that's just the same version. This one, is, uh, do we need to keep this one in for time being? I'm going to regret it if I delete it, aren't I? but I'm going to delete it anyway because <laughs> we can bring it back in. We can copy between. So there's our lead vocal. I'm pretty happy that we've got our lead vocal and our doubled vocal. Let's come down here and start looking at these background vocals, shall we? So this is the the um, the chorus backing vocal, which does uh, a little bit of this. Grown ass man, please take me home. Wow, that was a bit pitchy, dog. This is why you do a double, because let's uh, let's see if my second version uh, was a little bit more on the on the money. Grown ass man, please take me home. It's a little bit pitchy. Let, uh, see, here's the thing: when you're using backing vocals, I do cheat a little bit. I don't. I can come in here and put on. Uh, if we change this one out, because we don't have, we need to go back to the default punchy press. Uh, oh no, go to lead vocals. We'll put this on as lead vocals. We can use a little pitch control on this one if we want to. So uh, and uh, actually, well, I want to add a bit of drive to my other vocal. Let's just take a listen to this with its lead vocal on here. Grown ass man, please take me home. Ugh. Uh, see, this is the thing. It sounds. Okay, Ooh, I went all the way out. It sounds all right when it's mixed with the original vocal, but I can probably do a better job with these. These might end up being uh, being a little sneaky re-record um, uh, later, but we'll mix it in as it is at the moment because we're not going to do any recording at the moment. So let's grab our lead vocal and our double and uh, this backing vocal and just see what they sound like. Grown ass man, please take me home. See, it sounds all right with that. I've done all that I can, please take me home. See, yeah, and again, this is why soloing tracks and listening to them in isolation is usually a uh, uh, not a good idea, because uh, you will sort of listen to it. Uh, there's that thing, that's that thing where it did both of them. Remember, we were talking the other day with Barry <laughs> about the fact that sometimes you grab things and they both move. So we'll uh, we'll go with that for now. Let's just come down to this next one and see if uh, if this backing vocal is going to work for us here. Cause I just don't have a plan. Please take me home. Yep. So that's going to be cool. Now uh, we'll come here. This also does this job. So I quietly creep up the back stairs and you won't hear a sound. You'll awake and wonder what the time is. It's only ten p.m. And we'll just do a little trim here because we don't need that. We are going to come back and trim out a lot of this fat, all these blank bits. We can remove those, but we'll do that later in the project just so that we can keep them on the grid and move them around for now. Let's go to this last final chorus. I'm a grown ass man, please take me home. And that will go through for the rest of the track. I've done all. All right, let's bring in these uh, other little backing vocals. So we've got the please take me home that we do here during this first verse. Uh, let's just take a listen to these. Lights. Please take me home. Never had an urge for starting fights. Want to go home. Kind of happy on my own. Please take me home. And I know I'm surely not alone Cause I just don't have a plan Please take me home Alright, and then those, because these are on the left and the right, clearly, um, that we use in our verse, and they come in here at the end uh, with this big build-up. So let's just take a look at this part. Jan P. I'm a grown ass man, please take me 
So I think that's coming together. There's there's potential there for a few additional backing vocals to come in there to really build it up for that final chorus. You kind of can't go too hard on a final chorus. You really want to bring it on home. So we might play around with that as we go. So uh, let's come over to guitars now and just spend a little bit of time talking guitars. We're kind of working in reverse order here today. Last time we talked and we went uh, drums, bass, guitars, vox. This time we're starting with the vox and then we're going to work our way back up to the drum and the bass towards the end of this and see if we get a cohesive mix out of it. <laughs> we'll see how we go. So here is our acoustic guitars, as we said before. We've got left and right and these are doing the absolute like basic main part the whole way through like this. So with the left and the right, they're sitting nice and wide. They might even be sitting too wide. Maybe we just want to bring these in just so that there's a little crossover. So maybe we just bring the panning in a little bit to just give us some, some differences in there. I know there's some people that use LCR panning, which means you only use the left, the center, and the right. But I like to sometimes just keep things a little bit more, a uh, little bit different and bring them uh, a little bit uh, more to the center. So let's uh, just take a listen to this. Now, the one thing that I'm a little concerned with is the squeaking. Let me know, let me know if you think that we need to, to address this as we go through this, because again, I don't want to start spot fire putting out when I don't need to, but the because this is an acoustic guitar, and if you're not familiar, when you're, when you're playing an acoustic guitar and you're doing a part like this, when you're doing the, the you get that, you get that string squeak which is inherently not a bad thing, but it's bad if it becomes distracting. So we'll, we'll assess that as we go through. So we have, we have those two guitars, and again, you can see these are the original versions. In fact, let's just call it, because these were a little bit out of timing. So we'll delete those out. We're starting to make some, uh, some tough decisions here, but remember, we've got our backup. We've got our last version if we need it. So the start of this is that these two play their intro. A long delay on the last line of the book, yeah. Don't have a plan, plan, please take me home, home, home. Something like that. So this, oh, this needs a little bit of verb on it. That's why it's. Yeah, right. Squeaking is a bit of a staple of country music. Yeah. And you're right, but I, but I ain't restringing my guitar right now. <laughs> Later, Gary Hubs. Rock on, my friend. Yeah, you're right. Does it sound excessive? Is this triggering anyone, the squeakiness of these? I'll just let you listen to it without me for a minute. Because what we can do... There's a couple of things you can do with squeaky guitars. You can simply use some EQ to try and find that frequency and just pull it down a little bit, but then you can lose a bit of the airiness in, in the guitars if you do that, or you can use a de because a de is basically looking for those, those sibilant sounds. You can actually program a de to try and locate those. So let me know if you're watching your live or if you're even on the replay, uh, let me know down in the comments and say, squeaking good, squeaking bad, whatever it is. Not bothering. All right. it, it seems to be okay. Exactly. If it didn't do Elliot Smith any harm, uh, his records are full of them. Yeah, exactly. Stu Cash. I trust I, I trust all these great folks. So uh, uh, sounds perfectly fine. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it for now. I won't get pedantic. And this is the thing. You can really go pedantic with this stuff because it's your baby, right? And you don't want to, you don't want to hurt your baby. So you can spend a lot of time doing that. Now, the other thing we have here is I have this lead guitar part, which uh, I, I kind of added in on a whim, but I think it kind of works. So when it comes to the breakdown, I've added this uh, little lead paste. It is still on a, um, it's still on an acoustic guitar, but um, it's, it's doing this. Mm -hmm. 
So I think we need to do something to this tone. I think we need something like a flange on this one. What do you reckon? It needs to have a bit more of a lead tone. And someone was talking about wider before. Yeah, we are using wider. So the wider is just sort of, because it's only a single guitar tone, it's sort of pushing it out. And look, maybe one of the things is that we, maybe we go a bit nuts with this and we push it wider with wider. <laughs> we go to 200%. That's going to sound weird. But maybe we do put it out here at about, uh, you know, right about there. That could work well with them. Let's just go back. Maybe we don't really need a whole lot more, but I, I, is anyone else hearing just a little bit of flange? Hey, Deep Gravity. Yeah, nothing wrong with a bit of slap flange. Hey, Doug Kidder, by the way. Uh, hello to uh, Josh Calcutt, Doug Kidder, and uh, Deep Gravity. I hope you are all doing well. Uh, yeah, let's let's just throw a wee bit of flange on here. We'll just use the, uh, the base flanger here. Uh, from uh, Garage Band, and uh, let's just listen to this. We'll solo it for now, just so that we can find what we want to do with this tone. I, I want it to be super subtle. I don't want it to overwhelm. That's too much. So that's playing John. Yeah, I think it just it just softens it a bit, doesn't it? Bring it back in. Maybe it's a bit too much still. Just bring the mix down a little bit on the flange. Yeah, flanger and a phaser do very similar things. They're all just a uh, frequency oscillation kind of effects. So flanger and microphaser, not too bad. Uh, what about trying tone bridge to get maybe something like a Chet Atkins sound? Huh. Let's, let's have a quick play with that, shall we? We can always go back. Uh, we, we already have tone bridge on here. What are we using? I kind of forgot. <laughs> I forgot that we had tone bridge. Oh, no. Now tone bridge is going to, uh, is going to crash. Well, let's save out and come back in again, because Tone Bridge doesn't seem to be cooperating well there. And I haven't even updated. I haven't even... I've taken my own advice. All right, come back in here. Tone Bridge, are you going to work for us, buddy? No. It might not even be being applied at the moment, which is a bit of a worry. <laughs> Delete it and add it back in. If we turn it off, is it... Let's just see if it's actually uh, using it. It's not even using it. All right, so we can safely remove it because it's not actually using it for the tone. All right, let's um, let's put it back on. See if we can get it working again. Tone bridge, where are you? Oh dear. Oh dear, indeed. Okay, so let's just uh, we'll, we'll park the tone bridge. <laughs> it's a good suggestion, Frixie, but uh, tone bridge doesn't want to play nicely. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll we'll leave it as is. We won't we won't stress too much about the broken plugin. <clears throat> All right. Um, now you probably heard that we've got these little organ bits. Now you see how it's chopped up here. That's because originally I went a little bit nuts with the organ and I put too much in here. So now we've really just got a little bit of this kind of action. It's just doing a little bit of. Oh, I like it with the echo. A bit more echo. There's a little bit I need to fix up there because that do need that to be that just one clean note. Uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's just remove that one. So, da, 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 da. and we'll just uh, make sure that that's a bit more legato. Da, da, da. In fact, we'll. we'll well, extra legato. Right, let's just bring these together. Da, da, da. Let's see if that works for us. Yeah. 
cool. All right, so that's our little organ part that comes in there, the complement. Now there's a bit here. Let me know if this needs to stay. Should it stay or should it go now? Whether this bit of organ should stay in here because I do this big rising organ part as we come here into the final chorus, but I think it just adds a little bit too much mid-range mud to this. So uh, let me know, does this organ need to be here? I wonder what the time is, it's only just I think it needs to be there personally let's um let's leave it there for now but you know what we can do here's a little tip if you put the velocity down to zero velocity zero it should i think have i done this before it should not play it's, it is still playing at velocity zero i didn't know midi played at velocity zero i thought it should completely non-trigger Maybe it just plays at the absolute minimum volume. Let's see, maybe that will actually work it. It didn't seem to change anything at all. Did, did, that, did I not actually set that velocity correctly? Maybe I need to change it out there as well. That's weird. I definitely came in here. Velocity. Okay, apparently that's the lowest velocity it has. Yeah, should, should, should this bit of organ stay here? I know. That's where you need the uh, rim shot, don't you? All right, uh, I'm going to keep it for now. But if anyone, again, let me know on the on the comments after the show. If you're completely triggered by that weird organ there, say, organ no. Say, Pete Johns, please remove your organ. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, um, so that's where we're at there. Let's look at the bass here because uh, we did a little bit of mixing on the bass and I'm pretty happy with how this is going now. Now, originally, this upright bass in this part here, I turned the bass up. I've now realized that I wanted to turn it down. So that's why there's two bass tracks here. So if we listen to the bass, we've got uh, our acoustic bass doing its thing as well as an upright bass. And I kind of like the combination of that. I think it works well together. And when we get down to this bit, the upright goes out of there for a little bit just to give it some space and some air and then the uh, double bass comes back in. So pr pretty comfortable with the bass, may need to do some tweaking on that. But again, because this is a virtual instrument and this is just an acoustic guitar, I don't think that there's much that we need to do in the way of effects and EQ. We probably just, uh, well, in fact, we don't, maybe just a little reverb on that acoustic bass. Um, we don't need anything on the uh, the upright bass because that's already been processed there. So I think we've covered everything. There. Oh, the banjo. So this is the piste de resistance. This is this little p piece of finger picking banjo. A loop, a single bar loop that I downloaded from BandLab. And again, this is where experimentation is cool because I was kind of just showing how we could bring something from BandLab over here into GarageBand and we uh, found this. And by itself... Sounds kind of crappy, yeah? But when you bring it in to the mix, it actually complements it beautifully, I think. Never had to see the light. Never had an urge for starting fights. Kinda happy on my own. And I know I'm surely not alone. Cause I just don't have a plan. Yeah, I like it. All right. Uh, now, in terms of the drums that we have here, I haven't done much, to be honest. Uh, Jade Star gave these to me, and I kind of like them. They're growing on me. They're growing on me like a fungus. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I joke because I love. But no, they. Uh, Jade knows this, that whenever she sends me drums, I'm like, no. And then I'm like, maybe. And then I'm like, yes. And I'm like, I love them. <laughs> It's just how we roll. Uh, so th like I said, there's a few spots where I'll probably do a little bit of editing just to remove some parts. But for the sake of this first kind of static mix, I think uh, we're going to leave as is. But we may want to change out. So the one thing is um, the, the the kit here. This Blue Ridge kit um, for the hi-hat is a little bit splashy for me. So this one here. Get there. I like the... 
So Jade's programmed it really well to have that kind of rhythm, but we may want to play around with exactly which hi-hat we're using there, or may just want to do a little bit of tweaking on the EQ just to change things up a little bit on that. But uh, yeah, I don't think we need to do much with that right now. Uh, let's just make sure that we got a little bit of, yeah, we got a little reverb. Like I say, I like to just add on things like hi-hats and snares. Um, I like to add a little bit, uh, and even the toms, a little bit of reverb and a little bit of echo here. Yeah, it's a, it really is not a, um, it's a, it's a bit of a, uh, do, not dodgy, but it's a, it's a simple process. I just sort of make some tweaks and then go back and listen to, uh, listen to what, uh, what it sounds like. And then if, if there's something that sticks out, then you address that. So the next phase, by the way, after this, which we'll talk about at the end of the show is a lot of listening. So a lot of listening away from, uh, away from the studio. And we'll explain a little bit more about that. Uh, Jay Star is here. Hello. The pieces of the kits were just whatever, so you could change them to what you want. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think he did a pretty good job. Like the, the combination of the sunset, the SoCal and the Blue Ridge, like there's a lot of, it's, it's good to, you basically created a hybrid custom kit. Jay was just interviewing James Timms and she was talking about creating drums and the fact that when you hear an auto drummer, you know it's the auto drummer. So for people that know GarageBand well, like this original click track that I had here with, I think it was Benny, was it? Like this one here. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. While that sounds cool, once you've heard it in a song and then you hear it in another song, it becomes instantly identifiable as the auto drummer. Does that mean you shouldn't use auto drummer? No, but it means you should spend a lot of time customizing and tweaking it to make it sound as good as it can. Or if you've got a Jade Star, you just ask her to <laughs> to uh, create some custom drums, which is what we have here, which I think sound pretty darn awesome. So we've got our drums, we've got our bass, we've got our uh, guitars here, we've got our vocals. There's a few things that we uh, we can do and we'll need to do eventually. Uh, one is just our tops and tails. So we might as well do tops and tails now. And tops and tails is just taking off the start and the end so that you don't have uh, too much sort of stuff you don't need in there. Please take me. So obviously from there, we don't need anything all the way back to here. So we can just, yeah, yeah jive bunny, deep gravity. Yes, good old jive bunny. Hope you're doing well, deep gravity, by the way. Uh, haven't uh, haven't seen you around for a while. Good to see you uh, uh, out and about here on the channel. Good stuff. So we'll just kind of line everything up there to the end. And uh, again, when we do our final tweak, here's the thing. Don't spend a lot of time. What I used to do is I used to come in here and I used to painstakingly move these. I'd, I'd scroll so far in that Snap to Grid would go off and then I'd put this right at the end there. The problem is that as soon as you go off the grid, let's just undo that because it's going to annoy me. As soon as you go off the grid, the second you go off the grid, it makes it almost impossible to make little tiny tweaks because if you try to move a bunch of tracks, if they're not at least on a partial grid line like all of these are, so even this base, I'd probably just move back to there just so that everything is on a partial grid line. It just means that when you're moving things around, it's so much easier to line them up and just chonk them in to where you want them. So that's my that's my tip there. So uh, I reckon uh, I reckon we're ready to have a wee bit of a listen to uh, to this track and see how we're going. How are we going for time? Yeah, got about 15 minutes left. So uh, let's just uh, give this a bit of a spin. Yeah, Jive Bunny. Remember Jive Bunny? Da -da, come on, everybody. Da -da 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 -da. All right. Um, so once again, I'll give the other caveat, which is that we're going through three different audio devices through a piece of software, StreamYard, and then out into YouTube land. So you're going to get compressed audio. It's not going to sound exactly like it is sounding for me, but you'll get a general good idea. So if you've got, uh, if you've got things that you think stand out to you, things that we need to address, this is the sort of thing that we're looking at now. So uh, let's hit the play button and take a listen. Take me home I've done all that I can Please take me home Never had to see the light Never had an urge for starting fights 
kind of happy on my own And I know I'm surely not alone Cause I just don't have a plan Please take me home I've had all I can stand Please take me Up the back stairs and you won't hear a sound You'll awake and wonder what the time is It's only just me yeah. I'm a grown ass man Please take me home I've done all that I can Yeah, so you, you saw there I was playing around with that lead vocal tone. I'm not super happy with that because I think it needs a little bit of drive. It needs something crunchy. It's a bit too clean at the moment. So I'll probably uh, listen to that and tweak that and maybe uh, maybe go back to the drawing board on that one and uh, change it up, use the lead vocal or maybe use the Radio Ready Mix, uh, the preset, to play around with that. But I think we're on our way. I think uh, we, we've come along quite a long way in the, the last 15 days and uh, we're getting close to the point where this is going to start coming together. Together. It's still got that original energy, I think, um, and uh, but it's now sort of a little bit more polished. And obviously, we, from here, we'll mix it, uh, we'll master it, we'll do a little bit of automation and some other things on there to well, before we master to make sure that everything's just sitting in the right spot in the mix. But what I was saying before is from this point, what we'll do is, of course, we'll save. <laughs> we'll save it out. So what I suggest you do when you get to sort of this phase of your project and you, you just want to make sure that everything's right is listen to it away from your studio. Step away from the studio. So what I'll do is I'll, in fact, we can do this now, is I'll export myself a copy. So we'll share it out here, share the song and mix it down as an uncompressed WAV file. We'll share this out to Audio Share. Uh, open in. And we'll uh, share it to Audio Share. I'll listen to this now on my Mac. I'll listen to it on my iPhone. And the good thing about this is that we could share it. Although Audio Share doesn't use um, shared things. So I might have to just put it in my downloads folder so that I can grab it from my Mac, from my iPad, from my iPhone, and just listen to it in a bunch of places. But here's the key thing. Here's the thing that I learned a while ago. Don't be at your computer or your iPad or your iPhone while you're doing your mix listens. Take a pad and pen, or take a, a notepad on your notebook on your um your phone or your device, and go away. Don't be around. Listen on earbuds. Listen on Bluetooth speakers. Listen in the car. Listen other places. Take notes and then come back with your mix notes and make the tweaks. Why is that so important? Well, what you can do is you tend to over tweak. You tend to keep changing things. If you're just sitting here listening, you get ear fatigue. You start just fiddling with things, and you end up with things worse than what they were before you started. Trust me, I've done it a hundred times. It's a pain in the ass. So the tip here is the best thing to do. Oh, good. My audio units, uh, it's not audio units. Uh, fail. I reckon that's Tonebridge. I think Tonebridge is causing it issues there. We'll see if it actually exports without that because I don't think it was even running through Tonebridge in the end there. <laughs> this is a good sign, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, you, you'll, you'll find that you keep tweaking things and then you won't even remember what you tweaked and then you'll go back and try and retweak it. So the way I do it is I take a bunch of notes. I'll have like 10 things. I'll say chorus vocal down a couple of dB. I'll say uh, delay on guitar in second verse needs to be like more or less or whatever it is. So, um, and then I come back and then do each thing and then tick them off. And that way you know exactly what you've done. Uh, that's my tip anyway. All right, so here is, uh, here is our audio share version. We can just use our uh, trim and fade just to top and tails this so that when I export it to other devices, it will not be as uh, much at the front there. And the back doesn't matter quite so much. I want to make sure we keep all the tails. So I'll just dump it to there. We'll save that one. That'll trim and trim and save it down to here. And then let's uh, let's have a little listen. Cool. 
Cool. So it's all sounding good. We can save it in there. We can play around with that from here. So uh, that is uh, that is where we're at with the song, with the mixing so far. Like again, I know I'm not professing to be an expert mix engineer. I'm definitely not. I'm a I'm a good, I'm a music guy. I write songs, and as a songwriter, you need to know and I know enough to get myself into trouble. <laughs> But hopefully I know enough to then pull myself out of trouble. And hopefully there's been some things in here. And, and if anything, if, if all it's done uh, by watching this today is go, hey, it's not that hard. John's doesn't go and add all these highfalutin plugins and apps and third-party things. Usually it all just comes down to getting your balance of your mix right, your EQ, making sure nothing's poking out too much at the low end or the high end or the middle end. And then it's reverb and delay and a few little things like that. We added a flanger in there just to give it a little bit of a, a different sound. And then the stereo width uh, as well. So uh, it, there was a question earlier, which uh, was asked right at the front, which is, uh, uh, will you use the wider plugin? Yes, I did. And what is the uh, maximum percentage of wider that I should use for vocals, pianos and drums? As little as you can get away with. So you're going to get some significant phasing issues and uh, you can go and research phasing if you want to. But basically when, when you're grabbing a mono source and you're throwing it out wide, you can you can get some issues, especially when you then remix it down to mono. So someone's, li that's why I say listen on Bluetooth speakers and listen on, um, listen through your phone's speaker. Because if you're listening in mono, sometimes if you've got a stereo sound, you can get some really weird and wacky kind of phasing effects if you've got too much width. So there is such a thing as being too wide, and that's why wider I tend to keep it. Uh, apart from that experimental thing I did around 70%, which I may come back and go, oh, that didn't work when I, when I start listening to it and bring it back in. But I tend to just add a little bit. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you want to turn it up to 11 just to see what it does and then scale it back from there. But sometimes less is more. Just adding a little bit in uh, can help you more than other things all righty uh mix club says i've started taking notes but i keep forgetting to check uh, check my all right exactly you, you do have to then go back and look at your notes I've, I've got songs where i look at my i look at my document for my song and uh, it's still got in it's still got in the notes it's like turn second chorus down 2db and i'm like did i ever do that i don't think i ever did that <laughs> so yeah you do have to you have to do that uh it's called girth that's right it's uh it's not just the it's not the length of your song that matters it's the width it's just stereo width all right we're getting ourselves into uh, into murky waters here at the moment i think um that is uh, that is almost going to do it here uh we've got about five minutes left so uh, we'll just finish off here and uh talk about what's happening over the weekend here on studio live today so that you can keep yourself up to date uh but don't forget that we've got our friend mike over at creative source and i reckon he's got our mate ricky t brown on his show today let's uh, let's just find it shall we so creative source fucks my mucks Sorry, that's, that's the New Zealand version. Oh, here it is. Fix my mix. Uh, what episode are we up to? Episode 33? Yeah, there we are. So if, you are, if you're a fan of mixing, and if you're a fan of music, and if you're a fan of blokes with, uh, with British accents, then I recommend that you get yourself over here to Fix My Mix, episode 33, starting in uh, about three minutes. Look, we'll copy the link here. I'll throw it here in the chat. So if you're watching this one, uh, and if you want a little bit more live content with Mike and Ricky T. Brown over there, they listen to some songs from the community, from folks like you that have been created in the home studio, and then they critique them. They give them their ideas around what they can do to improve them. So it's a fabulous show. It's brought to you by DistroKid. So you know it's good. You know it's quality. DistroKid only sponsor quality shows. Speaking of DistroKid sponsored quality shows, our next quality show we have here on the channel is going to be your music live. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's going to be the happy hour. So I'm going to do a happy hour. I'm going to do a rock and roll happy hour. So we're going to hit some rock and songs. We'll be doing that on uh, Sunday morning for me here in Australia or Saturday evening in uh, the US, Canada and Europe. And then, of course, we do have your music live kicking off uh, Monday morning for me or Sunday evening. Uh, uh, for folks in the US, Canada, and the European zones, it's very late. And I apologize that it's so late for you folks over in the UK and Europe. I try to do my best. We will also be working on this song over the weekend for my patrons. So if you're a Patreon, if you're a patron of the channel, then you'll be able to check those out. And we will, of course, let you know uh, when we do GarageBand Weekly next week, we'll be returning to this as well as looking at the new GarageBand pack and updates and explaining again all about that stuff. So if you want to keep in touch between now and then with this song and with what's going on, become a patron at studiolivetoday.com slash Patreon. Uh, otherwise, we will return. You don't miss anything. You just don't get it live. And you don't get all of the uh, the stuff. You don't hear me swearing because I'm a little bit uh, a little bit filthier on the Patreon streams. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you ever thought, oh, I really want to hear Pete swear a lot more, uh, then join uh, join the Patreon. Uh, like like cool folks like uh, Mr. Mark Bro. Thank you all for being here today. I do appreciate you. Um, thank you. I appreciate you, the Mix Club. Yeah, I think it's coming together. Uh, first time hearing it. Very cool, Frigsy. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually doing this stuff so late at night that poor folks like Frigsy don't get an opportunity to uh, to, to tune in. Uh, but that is going to do it. Please do jump on over to uh, to Mike's show now to uh, fix my mix. Say good day. Tell him Pete sent you, and uh, I think you'll have a good old time. Him and Ricky T. Brown uh, always put on a good show. So I'll be jumping over there now. And uh, until next time, as we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself this week. Please be kind to others, and please. Keep creating. I'll see you next time here on uh, the Creator Town Hall. Bye for now. See ya.